Hi, today we're doing a different kind of video. Instead of looking at any particular product, we're actually going to take a broader look at lenses, looking at focal length, close-up distance, and macro magnification. So, let's start! Today we're doing something different. This will not be a lens review or comparison, instead we're going to take a look at some interesting numbers. Our goal here is to get a better understanding of the connection between a number of popular lens focal length and their close-up distance and macro magnification capabilities. Let's give a specific example. Say you're in the market for a new 35mm full-frame lens and you want to know how the lens that you're considering stands in terms of its close-up distance and magnification in relation to other lenses in the category. What we try to do here is organize all this information in one place and see if there are any general conclusions that we can draw from the numbers that we find. Two notes before we start. We decided to restrict ourselves to modern full-frame mirrorless lenses with autofocus. We also stick with each specific focal length, so a list of 24mm lenses will not include a 25mm lens. This is arbitrary, but you need to draw the line somewhere. Also worth noting is that these are all official manufacturer numbers. Let's start with 24mm. In July 2022, Canon announced a compact fast 24mm lens with a 1-2 magnification in the form of the RF 24mm f1.8. On the Sony side, we recently had an extensive 24mm roundup for Sony cameras and you have an inexpensive Tamron 24mm f2.8 with a 1-2 magnification. For Nikon, your options at the moment are pretty limited when it comes to close-up capabilities in this focal length. Taking a broader look at the entire list, you can see that the Viltrox 24mm lens has a focusing distance in centimeters which is bigger than the lens focal length in millimeters, which is never a good sign and indeed it has a 1 to 10 magnification. Moving over to 35mm, this is one of the most popular focal length for full frame cameras with all the major players participating, some with more than one lens. Tamron again has a very attractive option for close-up shooters with 1-2 magnification and 15cm minimum close-up distance. Canon, just like with the 24mm, has a very attractive 35mm RF option with a 17cm minimum close-up distance and 1-2 magnification. Both Sony lenses are above average when it comes to close-up focus distance and macro magnification with all other lenses being fairly average with around 30 cm distance and 1 to 5 or worse magnification. Viltrox again closes this list with 40 cm close-up distance and 1 to 10 magnification. On a personal note, we would really like to see a full macro 1 to 1 magnification lens in the 35mm focal length. These can be very useful for close up work with some environment in the shot. Another very popular focal length is, of course, 50mm. Interestingly, at the moment, Tamron has no representation here. However, both Sony and Nikon have lenses with 1 to 1 magnification and 16cm minimum focus distance, which is nice to see. Canon also has an above average option here with the RF 50mm f1.8 which has a 30cm minimum close-up distance and 1 to 4 maximum macro magnification. The rest of the lenses on this list are fairly average with the compact Sony 50mm f2.5 G lens having a decent 35mm close-up distance but only 1 to 5.5 macro magnification. Viltrox once again comes last. Finally, we take a look at 85mm, which has always been a popular focal length for portraits. However, as you can see, it is not a very popular focal length for those looking for close-up work. Really, the only exception here is the Canon 85mm f2, which has a fantastic close-up range of only 35cm and 1-2 to macro magnification capability. All of the other lenses on this list are not designed for close-up work. Well, at least the Viltrox didn't come out last on this list. It is worth noting that if you are looking for this type of tele macro lens for Sony or Nikon platforms, you will need to look for the 90 or 105mm options instead. So let's conclude. As we have mentioned, we focus in this video only on mirrorless autofocus lenses. 
If you're okay with adapting DSLR lenses, not to mention using manual focus lenses, new or adapted vintage ones, this can open a whole range of options for you. Plus, you can always resort to extension tubes and other techniques to improve your close-up capabilities, but all of these are beyond the scope of this short video. So what did we actually learn by looking at all these numbers? First, as a general rule of thumb, and at least for the focal lengths that we have examined, a lens with a minimum focus distance equal or higher to that of its focal length in centimeters is typically not ideal for close-up work. Another interesting point is the connection between the minimum focal length of a lens and its maximum macro magnification. Before we started working on this video, we naturally assumed that there is a direct correlation between the two and the two lenses with the same minimum close-up distance will have the same maximum macro magnification. While that seems to be true for most cases, there are some cases where this doesn't seem to hold true. For example, the Canon RF 50mm f1.2 L USM lens has a minimum close-up distance of 40cm and 1 to 5.2 maximum magnification while the recent Samyang 50mm f1.4 AF Mark II lens has the same minimum close-up distance but 1 to 6.2 maximum magnification only. Since we suspect that the correlation still holds true, we can only guess that one or both of these lenses might not be a true 50mm design, but that is just a conjuncture on our part and if you have other thoughts on this matter, please feel free to share them in the comments below. We can only hope that you will come out of this video with some insights into the close-up and macro capabilities of different popular mirrorless focal lengths. If there are any full-frame mirrorless autofocus lenses that we didn't include here, please feel free to share them and we shall add their information into the article on LensVid. So I hope you enjoyed this video, check out the full article on LensVid.com, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, see you next time.